Well, Coach, first of all, let's talk about the game against West Florida this past Saturday. You know, you were without a lot of offense in that ball game with Sharon Wright going yeah. down in the first half, and Marcel Newsom did not play in that ball game. That's a that's a lot of production to replace. It is. You know, we've had some injuries throughout the year and some things that they're not season ending, but we have had that as well. Some season ending injuries, but also uh, guys that miss a game or two. And, uh, you know, Marcel was not there the whole game. He was out in a boot sitting there watching. I wish I could go over and take it off. And, but the, you know what, we had some guys fill in pretty good. Kel Gates did a great job and all the rest uh, as well. We, we completed a lot of passes and moved the football through the air pretty decent. Um, but it's always good to have one of your better players. He, he's a very explosive player, so it'd be good to have him. Sharon obviously is very, really good too. He's been a, our starting quarterback all year long. He's, the, he's a, what we call a dual threat quarterback. He can throw it and run it, and has been getting better and better. And when he goes down after eight plays, uh, you know, next man has to step up, and that's not always easy at the quarterback spot. Uh, we've got Walker Meadows, who is out. You know, he's uh, been out for several weeks now, and so we get your third guy and your fourth get to play. And it's kind of like we did last year. But anyway, they did a super job. I think Kyron did a good job of uh, moving the football. We made some things happen. We had also made some mistakes, but I think he, he played uh, really, really well for the circumstances especially. Now, I do think you have to be encouraged that when your players do have to go out with injury over the last couple of years, as you said, you have had guys who have stepped up and responded positively to the situation. They haven't panicked. They've stepped into their roles, and that kind of speaks to the preparation leading up to game day, that they're ready to go. It does, and that's very difficult, especially at a quarterback spot where you know you're probably not going to play uh, in, in a certain depth chart you know, status as, as Kyron was. And he's just been preparing himself mentally and, and uh, also physically. He gets limited reps in practice. And then his time came, though, but he was ready. He was watching and he was – you know, those mental reps can be very important. At other positions, you know, you may get reps at a running back or a, or a lineman or, or even a, a um, defensive player in any spot, you know, and you can get in the game more so than you can at quarterback, maybe play some football on special teams. But – when your time comes, you step up there as well. But quarterback's a unique uh, position where you might not get as many reps. You might not see the play in practice that you end up calling in the game. And uh, he executed pretty well. So I was proud of Kyron and, and uh, his preparation, how he did come through. You mentioned Gates. He was a reliable option for you, especially on the outside catching passes last Saturday. Yeah, he was. And, you know, Kel has done really good for us. We, we knew he was an explosive player and, and uh, really good with the ball after he catches it. But he had, I want to say, 11 catches for well over 100. Could have had a few more. He, he had a couple that he, that he dropped. Um, I know one that he did, and he can catch at least. It wouldn't have been just right in his chest. He, he did, uh, uh, could have had a little more. But he's, he's an explosive kid, and I think we're going to continue to try to get him the ball even when Marcel comes back, uh, like we have been. We've been spreading it around pretty good. But uh, you want to get it to your playmakers. He's definitely one of those for us. Yeah, Alizé Chubbs had 18 carries in the ball game, and uh, I think it was as much of a one running back game as we've had since you've been here at Mississippi College. And he's he's done a good job the last couple of weeks in answering the call. Alizé has been doing really good, getting better and better each week as well. Uh, just finding the holes and seeing where to run and being a patient. You know, when you get in there as a running back and you're getting the, to the game, uh, the game speed obviously is a little bit different. Of course, he saw game speed in high school. But uh, and got used to it as he as he was the guy there. But when he comes here, uh, he doesn't get to play as much. Then all of a sudden he's in practice is not quite the same as it is in the game. So he's getting a chance to see that and get get more and more used to it. And uh, then really really once he does, he's starting to cut loose a little more, not thinking as much, uh, knowing where the holes are going to be, knowing what to expect from the defenders, and really protecting the football. And he's done a good job of that. We need to continue to work on holding it tight. But he does, and he's made some things happen. And, and uh, you know, you have to go fast if you want to be effective. And Alizé has gotten faster and faster and more effective each week. You know, against maybe the best quarterback in, in, the, in the league, maybe yes. you know, statistically at least the best quarterback in the league, I thought the secondary, the score notwithstanding, played pretty well. Chris Manning and Rondeas Johnson had the INTs, and Daquan Lewis I thought had a really good ball game. Really did. And, you know, we're missing a couple of guys at free safety. You know, Stephen Bradley went down with an injury the week at Delta State week and uh, has been, had a concussion at least. And we can, we're going through the protocol like, we, like everybody in the country. Uh, we don't want to put him in any danger. But he's the one that left uh, the Delta State game, you know, in, uh, on the stretcher, had everybody scared. He's doing fine with his neck, but we're still making sure he's okay and his head is, is uh, fully recovered before we get him back out there. 
And that, that was one we missed at free safety. He's a, obviously our starter. And then Michael Bagley is also uh, not, not able to play as well, but he's, he's uh, with an injury. But also, uh, so we put in the third there. That is tough when you're going against the best passer the best passer and the best uh, passing attack in the league and maybe one in the country, uh, you're missing a couple of your starters there and, and, uh, and, and the backup. And you go in with a third string guy and that's all we have. So we don't have much depth. So they're not only uh, not as experienced, not quite as talented, but they also get a little tired and uh, they're, they're stretching them pretty good there in the secondary. So we did do a good job. We were playing closer coverage. We were making a few things happen. Uh, but it was definitely a, a challenge for us. And I think we saw just how important it is to, to maintain possession of this ball game. You know, West Florida had a really long, I think it may be a 16 play drive there in the third quarter, mm -hmm. kept the ball a long time, kept moving the change. They converted on third downs on a regular basis. Yes, and they did. We saw how important that is to win in this league. It is, and we've, got, we've gotten better and better as well as far as third down conversions. I want to say we were well over 50% in this game as well, but they were really, really high on the third down conversions. And here's the thing, I, I know Coach Collins has mentioned this, you know, we did get a few stops in the second half. We held them to field goals. We need to hold them to punts though. That means stop them on third down back when they're backed up instead of when they're close in field goal range. And that is something we're going to continue to work on, continue to improve on, uh, on our stopping the run and the pass. But our defense is getting better and better each week. Hopefully we'll continue to grow this, this week against Valdosta. Well, it's certainly a big challenge against Valdosta. They beat West Georgia last week 38-27. to, to 27. Uh, West Georgia, a very good football team yes. that we'll see here in a couple of weeks. So it just seems like the Choctaws are getting teams that are coming off of really good, uh, good ball games of their own. Yes, they are. And you know what, um, Reed, everybody in this league is, is good uh, from top to bottom. And there's not, a, there's not a week that we'll be able to take off and say, you know what, we got an easy one this week. <laughs> I wish there was, but it's not. That's the way it is. And, we'll, and one day, run day, hopefully soon, hopefully this week, we're going to be one of those teams where they say, you know what, you can't take off this week as well. And we're getting better and better, and we're being more challenging. Uh, we're putting ourselves in position to win, not just to play close. I think we are playing close, and we're, we're a play or two away. If you look at some of the, the – well, if you watch the game like I do, uh, on the film and you get to go back and watch it, you'll see that just a few plays away, it's not just talent-wise, it's not, it's not getting outmatched uh, at every position. It may be a little bit of depth, uh, that's, that's important to understand, but I think we're getting better enough where we can compete, we can compete on a daily basis, but on a play-by-play -play basis as well. It's going to make a difference and uh, we're going to get us a victory. We were talking about this on the broadcast last week about how the Choctaws seem to be a fundamentally a very good tackling team, that they wrap up people well, they make first contact, and then they, they, they bring them down. Not a lot of yards after contact against this Choctaw defense. No, they're doing better and better at that too, and just tackling. And, and that starts with defending the run, but also all these guys catching the ball, you've got to tackle them. Uh, we want to we wanna do something. We want to make sure and create turnovers now. When they have the ball and we're stripping for that ball and we're trying to get it out of there so we can get it. Uh, and sometimes when you do that, you don't tackle as well. We're focusing on the ball and that ball leaves, but so does the person and that uh, offensive player. So we have gotten good at tackling, but also trying to get that ball out. We need to continue to get better at that. Well, we've got homecoming this week on campus, lots of different yes. activities. It's always a good time for everybody, but it's also really easy, especially on a campus our size, to kind of lose focus if, if you're not careful, if you're, if you're on the football team. and. You've got a game to focus on on Saturday. Yeah. Has that been something that you've uh, addressed with your team, uh, the idea of staying focused for homecoming? Well, you know what? It's always a, a point of emphasis each week is staying focused, you know, because you want to uh, concentrate on the little things and the details of, you know, everything you do during the day and building up to the game. So we want to focus on all of that. And then the plays, the, every play and every defensive call and all the things, they need to know exactly what to expect. Uh, and, and then be able to react, be able to have that awareness that we need. And it takes focus, there's no doubt about it. It takes getting ready for the ball game. Well, this week is a little bit unique. You know, every week is unique, but this one is really unique with all the alumni coming in and all the activities on campus. So it is going to be something. I think that's what our players need to, uh, do though is you want to have fun playing playing the game you know because it is a game we want to have fun we want to make sure and have fun and do well though uh, so there's a good balance between that so with the homecoming festivities we want them to enjoy them we're going to be a part of a few of them too I think uh, with the homecoming um, pep rally 
you know, we're going to be in, involved in that as the coaches and players. So uh, we might lose our focus that day for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time again this week, and we're looking forward to a good homecoming game against Valdosta. Thanks for your time. Thank you.